So people often ask me, how did I get so smart? <laughs> so you get to sit in on a neurofeedback treatment on yours truly. Uh, this is, uh, <clears throat> some may know, but for those of you who don't, uh, I have been in the healing uh, arts world for a long time and I came by that honestly because when I walked out of a rehab center in 2003, I had completely broken my brain and my body and I had uh, to completely rebuild those neural pathways. <laughs> I had to learn how to live a life worth living. So I sought out the best doctors. I thought, sought out the best um, psychiatrists. I've sat hundreds of hours in therapist chairs and I'm not ashamed to that, uh, to, to say that. It's helped me immensely and over the years, I've been introduced to different modalities that help people heal from trauma, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation. And a year ago, my soon to be uh, sister and brother-in-law bought a, uh, a brain center in Twin Falls, Idaho, and they utilized neurofeedback. And it was intriguing to say the least. And here we are a year later and the testimonials that they've shared with us about people who after several sessions came back to them and said, you saved my life. This was the last straw. Like if I didn't get relief from neurofeedback, I was going to jump off the Perrine bridge. Crazy uh, and true, sad and true. The beautiful thing is, is these people have uh, experienced tremendous relief. One that was the most, um, Fascinating and fun for us is this family in Twin Falls has a five-year-old son who's autistic and has never spoken a word in his life. And so they did exactly what we're doing here. They had this kid in his um, in a neurofeedback session and it was challenging to keep him still. But they nonetheless got the, um, the session done. On the way home, that little boy who had never spoken a word in five years told his parents, I want a train. He didn't say a word, he spoke a complete sentence. And so that, uh, those are the types of stories that we're hearing constantly. And now since Lori has um, opened Ascend Brain Center here in Boise, and we have been helping friends and family, we're starting to hear the same types of things from those individuals as well. So uh, my personal testimony is, I didn't realize that I had anxiety. Like I thought I had really healed a lot of uh, aspects of my neurology. And when Lori opened the center and we started doing treatments on us as a family, I literally woke up one day and, and just realized I feel different. <laughs> and she's heard me say this over and over again over the past six weeks that I've never felt like this before. I've never felt this good before. I've never felt this clear and centered before in my life and I didn't know until I actually had to, the opportunity to experience it um, another really fun story is in August see I work for um, Tony Robbins I work in his business mastery department and so I talk to entrepreneurs on a daily basis and I see if they're a fit for our business program and I got to go down and hang out with Tony and the team in West Palm Beach Florida in August so it's five days and any of you who've been to a Tony Robbins event know that it's a lot of energy, a lot of lights, a lot of sound and a lot of, of interaction. And so I came back and I was a little bit fracky, not, not a little bit, I was pretty, pretty emotionally drained and Lori hooked me up and he hooked me up, did a neurofeedback session with me. And the next day I had two of the very best days I've ever had on the phones working with my clients. And what that looks like is um, a lot of times, like people will go away from pain or toward pleasure. And I realize that I'm very much more uh, away from pain person. And so that creates a sense of uh, uh, fear, a sense of uh, scarcity, and again, these are things I didn't really realize until I didn't experience them anymore. And so that's what happened. I got this uh, neurofeedback treatment. The day I got back from Business Mastery, the next two days were absolutely phenomenal. And it lasted. The, the sessions lasted. So 
anyway, we thought that it would be fun to sh like let you in on um, what we're doing over here and also invite you if you would like to come experience neurofeedback. I've got a really dear friend and they've struggled with chronic anxiety all their life and they've done tremendous, a lot of modalities, a lot of modalities. And they got a couple of neurofeedback treatments and they said of all the modalities, it was the one thing that reduced their um, anxiety the most. So, so yeah, I'm sitting here uh, in the middle of my work day. Um, yesterday was a little bit off for me. Um, I got to speak, and this is an off topic story, but I, I had a client book a call with me yesterday or two days ago. And I had no idea what I was in for. We actually did Zoom. And so I normally do just phone calls, but this, we were face to face. This lovely lady who was born in Rwanda. There's a, a tip there. Some of you know what happened in Rwanda and is still happening in Rwanda. And she started to share with me how when she was a five-year-old child, the Holocaust in Rwanda happened. And she saw atrocities. I'd like to interview her. She's flying back to Africa um, this week and she'll be back in a couple of weeks. I really want to interview her and go live so you can hear her story. But I, I want to forewarn you, um, be, be stable and so solid in yourself when you hear her testimony because she, um, they're in, in the world of trauma, there's big T trauma and there's little T trauma, right? So big T trauma is um, physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, very overt um, verbal abuse, right? There's a lot of big T trauma in the world. But what uh, a lot of people don't realize is it doesn't have to be that to quantify uh, as trauma. There's little T trauma. And that is stuff like children not getting the eye um, connection, the their needs met as children, right? They're hungry, they're not being fed. They're alone, they're latchkey kids. Those are all kinds of little T traumas. And they what that happens is we make that mean something on an unconscious level. And then we carry this, those traumas forward into our adult life so that in our now moments, if something consciously or unconsciously reminds us of something of a little T trauma that happened in our past, we start to react like a little child. And an example, here's something, a gift for you. Uh, many of you probably know who Gabor Mate is. He's a phenomenal uh, therapist out of Canada. He wrote a book a few years ago called In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, all about um, addiction and trauma. Phenomenal book. And he's gone way beyond that with his latest book called um, The Myth of Normal. The Myth of Normal. And he talks about how when he was six months old, he was in Budapest during the war, like in the 40s, right? Uh, we're talking Nazi Germany stuff. And in order for his family, the, his family had to escape Budapest. And in order to keep him safe and alive, Gabor's mother handed his six month self to a complete stranger, a Christian family to get him out of the country. And they were reunited, I think like four months later. But you can imagine as a six month child who is nonverbal, who needs connection with mom and held and touched that he had massive abandonment uh, issues from that scenario. When he was, so now fast forward to a 72 year old Gabor Mate who just went on a speaking gig and just awed an audience and he got all the accolades and he felt really great about himself and he's flying home. And when he is landed, he gets, receives a text from his wife and his wife says, I'm going to, I'm unable to pick you up. I'm tied up at home with knitting, <laughs> you know, something like that. So what happened is Gabor is instantly upset. He gets a cab and goes home. And when he gets home, he completely ignores his wife for three days. Doesn't make eye contact with her. He doesn't uh, speak to her, basically gave her the cold shoulder. But because she knows him so well and understands what's happening, she finally said, knock it off. And it snapped him out of it. So three days, and the reason that he responded like that, he very clearly states, is because an unconscious reminder of being abandoned was triggered. 
right? So when he was returned as a child to his mother after being handed off, guess what happened? Six month old baby didn't look at his mother, didn't make eye contact, did avoidance. Why? Because to make eye contact was to get connected and to fear being abandoned again, right? And so he very beautifully illustrates that in the opening of, in the myth of the myth of normal, how we may think that we uh, are choosing and have space in our life, but when we are triggered and traumatized, like when we're triggered and, re and reminded, our frontal cortex goes offline and we go into that fight or flight response. The beautiful thing about it is Gabor said, listen, it may have taken three days for, he calls it the refractory phase, for me to finally get back to normal and actually treat my wife accordingly because I could have just said, oh, she's busy knitting, no problem. I'll get a cab, I'll go home. Hey honey, this is how amazing my event was. But he got triggered and gave her the cold shoulder. But he said what was three days in the past would have taken weeks and sometimes months. He would have given her the cold shoulder for months. But on constantly recognizing and doing the work, he's been able to compress that refractory phase to just a, ma a matter of days. And obviously the goal is to eventually maybe he gets triggered and he gets to choose, oh, this hurts. I know why it hurts. And I'm going to go treat my wife well because it's not what I'm making, my, my little self is making it mean. So that's the kind of stuff that we geek out on and are really passionate about because living a life on, um, in full react, reactionary mode has really harmed amazing relationships in my life, personal, intimate, and business-wise. <clears throat> it's had negative effects for my children. And fortunately, I've, because I diligently choose to understand what's going on in me so that I can show up appropriately and in kindness and in love, that I've been able to heal many of those relationships and not harm relationships moving forward. And the gift to me is having been blessed with those experiences is that now I have a, a scope that I can see other people and really understand mostly what's going on, where it's coming from, and if they want help, that we have ways that we can help them to heal. So am I done? Yeah. I feel amazing. <laughs> so I wish, I wish these electrodes would make me better looking, but so anyway, Lori, anything you want to say? Yeah, I would just like to add that the month of October, I'd like to offer all of our friends and family their first treatment free. So if you want to come try this out, get a hold of me. Um, you can go to ascendbraincenter.com or just text me at 208-949-4502. I'll put it um, in the comments. But yeah, we would love to come see how this could help you or maybe someone you know. So month of October, first free session. So we'd love to come, have you come visit us and help you out. Yeah, we, we get, like literally we can say hook you up <laughs> in a very healthy way, <laughs> hook you up to the electrodes. See, we got all our fun stuff here. But uh, anyway, thanks for stopping in guys. I really appreciate uh, you listening to this and peace. Have a great day. It's been so long. How do I turn this thing off? Oh, finish. <laughs> <laughs>